I'm here now. Welcome to the 18th episode of This Won't Last Long, the podcast where I talk about myself, all things pop culture, nerdy, um, everything like that. So, um, last time, in episode 17, we talked about my project, The Interview, which is a choose your adventure style project. I wouldn't call it a series because I don't think it will take that long to get through to watch all of it <laughs> when it's fully made, but um, it's releasing in October of this year. Um, it's been a few months. I'm kind of around the time of Halloween because it's creepy. It's creepy and all that shit, but um, yeah, so last time um, there was still some more stuff to be worked on with it. Um, as of today, the official trailer, um, I posted a poll on my Instagram asking um, my followers kind of what they thought of either posting in the last couple of days or mid-August um, because um, a couple of weeks ago I posted like a quick 20 second production teaser um, kind of saying that I'm in production um, and it was like 20 seconds and that was like two weeks ago so like marketing wise I was like well should I post an official trailer now since it has only been two weeks since I posted the last promo for it and um, the majority as I check now have said yes um, for posting it like the next couple days so actually see here because the story as I just saw now I uh, just went away so let me kind of told them I told people that like once the story goes away the majority voted option would um, get that option so let me just see what was decided was on the wrong story highlight. <laughs> okay. Um, a resounding 60% of my followers um, voted uh, to post the trailer today. Um, and then 40% voted uh, mid-August because they thought that would be better. Since majority voted today, I will make it public right now. Love it, but and I'll actually show you guys. That's really cool. Um, um before I show you guys, I'll kind of end with showing you guys this, but um. couple weeks about university stuff. My lord has been hectic. <laughs> the only stuff left I have to get for residence we'll look here is um, a medium sized TV so I can keep playing my games, keep streaming, I'm playing those games for you guys even though I'm living not here at home. Um, I live Present, so that'll be good. I can still do all that, even though um, I'm living somewhere else. So that um, I need an area rug. It said on the list that they provided me. Um, they said bring the slippers. Um, but my mom is saying my slides should be just fine. Um, Cause she's guessing that wearing slippers or whatever is just for like communal shower or like communal washroom or whatever which makes sense so I may get slippers I may not um, 
we have multiple vacuums here um, at home, so I'll bring one with me. And then a disc lamp, and then that is it. We'll get all of that, um, as I talked about before, probably on a previous episode, I think. Um, back, in, <laughs> back in high school, it was literally a month ago. Um, <laughs> Um, back in high school, uh, there was a social worker, I mean, um, not real name, I guess I'll call her, um, Patty. Uh, so Patty, um, <clears throat> would, uh, she was a social worker, um, raised a social worker at my high school, and, um, so, you know, need her help a lot. stuff a lot um, and then talking about that stuff based off of those conversations she gave me and everyone who else everyone every other one of her uh, student clients at my high school um, she gave me and every one of those a $250 $250 Walmart gift card uh, towards uh, university stuff so very good um, because hopefully, as the stuff I just listed, hopefully I can get all of that with that one gift card. And I'm also, money-wise, going to be selling um, some old equipment. Um, there was an old Blackberry that I found. I talked about the last time, there was an old Blackberry I found that if some collector will probably want um, that I found in my old, uh, old drawer there. Um, old microphone that I used to use. Apparently I got it for a Christmas gift, but like, I used it for a long time, and it served its uses for me, so. Um, my old couch card wasn't working that well, as you guys saw in the last few uh, streams a little bit ago. Um, since I've started using PS4 Remote, remote Play, which has worked uh, very well so far, so I don't really need a couch card anymore, so that's good. So that, so that can be sold, and the final thing was my old uh, tripod so so because it was from Amazon like I'll uh, use the money to uh, get a new professional tripod um, might as well right I'm going into professional film school only a professional film tripod so um that's for money wise and then also yeah that's it right uh yeah and then Eventually, Twitch affiliate and YouTube partner, um, but that's like down the road. Um, doesn't have to be so down the road for uh, here on Twitch because 28 more followers, and then that's follow the goal for um, what's it called Twitch affiliate. So I actually. It was also something I did in that time since the last episode. I made a follower alert and a custom little thingy. So, um, I don't know how I would show you guys this, but. That's not 
great. <laughs> I okay. I don't know what happened then. Uh, well, uh, I did make a new follow brother, um, and it was. I guess I'll just describe it. Um, it was the um, video essay intro. Which you saw, I guess not podcast intro, which you saw um, for the starting soon for today's episode. Um, and with that GIF, it's also, uh, it was on the Twitch, like, alert library, but um, there was like a kind of fit my Michael Craze aesthetic with the digital vintage stuff, so it was like a kind of starting up sound effect, which was cool. Um, for new followers, so that's cool. And then that'll be, I'll we'll figure out how to uh, intertwine that with my stuff, but that's kind of it with what I've made. Um, again, with the interview, I mean, I made, because um, my, um, the two close friends of mine who've been helping me film, I'm very gracious for them, but, um, They've been a little out of commission uh, recently for their personal reasons. I won't get into why. Um, everything's good. We're all still friends. Just they need to. I don't want to say take time off, but like just take time off from life. <laughs> they just need to be on their own for a bit. But um, I mean, honestly, that's fine because. First of all, I'm not that much of a dick, and I can be like, no, you don't, you don't do anything with me. No, but, um, in terms of the interview, it's fine, because I only need, since the intro video is done and edited fully, I just need, like, six. Yeah, wait. I always forget the branching paths of this project, sorry. So it was... Um, the first few choices I can do, as well as like the two endings with the other, with the choice, the third choice of one of those paths. Um, one of those choices, so that's five uh, videos. Uh, those could probably be done in one afternoon, so... Uh, filmed wise, filming wise, and then the um, what's it called? And then the other um, the other three ish videos. Um, could be made in another afternoon. So like, and then anything that we didn't get that like of those eight-ish videos, we could do like in another uh, afternoon. So like, all in all, if it's like once a week, that's like three weeks. And I move on the on August twenty-sixth, which I also found out recently, but um, in that time since last episode, but so. Yeah, um, just trying to think here, to move on the 26th, and then this month, and this is the 31st, so nine days. If it's truly last minute, like the day before I move, or like a couple days before I move, um, Um, 
try to ask someone else to help me, uh, which is all good because health comes before creativity, health comes before uh, friends or family, like your own health, mental, emotional, physical, it all comes before everything. And I get that. Um, I can't lie and say it's not frustrating, but um, my love for them <laughs> being like family overshadows anything else. So, um, yeah. I'm not even mad, I'm just, uh, I'm just hopeful that we'll be okay. So, anyway. Um, but yeah, um, since I haven't been able to shoot anything else for it, other than, well, the official trailer, as you'll see, is, I mean, you won't get live, but, uh, because I won't show you the intro video, that's just spoilers. <laughs> but, um, it's all stuff from the intro video, it's all footage from the intro video, and, um, nothing else. So, kind of getting all the trailer worthy, worthy footage from that, since the intro video is an intro to the project, figured, I figured I could use it for also a trailer, um, and promos and stuff, so, um, I think I've used <laughs> all the trailer worthy footage for, um, from the intro video with this official trailer, as you'll see. Um, so, this will probably be the, um, not final trailer, but this will probably be the final trailer for a while, like until I get to shoot more of the project, um, and come up with more taglines and things and in the next couple weeks when I start shooting again, but yeah, so, Um, <clears throat> so I, in that time, I've made this trailer, I have, um, made a playlist of all the music that I found, uh, the songs that I found for each video, actually, because that is, that helps me and um, my friends in the long, who are helping me in the long run, because I have every song planned for each video, for each second of the fucking, like, thing. And there you go. And that's... And that saves me time in editing. That saves... Um... That saves me and my friends time in figuring out how to, in figuring out how to shoot everything because... Um... If we know kind of the vibe based off of this of the music, then that already helps, like, shooting-wise, because aesthetic and mood and vibe is all intertwined with anything, with, um, filmmaking and all that, because, like, with setting, that's also a mood and a vibe and aesthetic with, like, characters, like, it, it's all intertwined in those three things, mood, aesthetic, and vibe, tone, tone is the better word, but... <laughs> But yeah, so um, I won't show you guys those songs because um, I don't want you guys like speculating and come up with the ending of wrong. But I do have a song for every single one I do it for every single second of this thing. So it's good. That's this, that, and this trailer. Play us with all the songs for everything for the project and this trailer. Any more promos I'll try to make from <laughs> the intro video uh, are probably the only things uh, I can do for this project for like until I can shoot again for the next couple weeks. So um, at least I know that. At least like at least I don't have anything that I'm leaving unfinished that I can do by myself because everything else I have to do with people um, that I can't do by myself so yeah that's all for the interview I think and then I'll show you the trailer after but um and then with the university stuff I think that's it 
Um, and uh, yeah, I'm just super ready to, to go, man. Um, I already met some people, as I talked about this last time. Um, some of them I kind of like. <laughs> we'll see how that plays out, but uh, <laughs> anyway, um, but yeah, I met like a bunch of people, a uh, bunch, like there, there's like eight of us, <laughs> uh, as we so far know in my program, um, in my exact program, because there's like offshoots of cinema and media arts, but um, my specific program is cinema and media arts production at York, so in that specific program, as far as we know, there's like eight of us. And, um, yeah, they're all pretty cool. cool. Um, so I'm very excited for that. Orientation, the orientation ticket was expensive, but um, you know, I talked about the money thing, so it should be fine. Um, as well as Frosh Icebreaker ticket, which is the like orientation party the day the night before classes which it's a little fucked up to put it the night before classes um not really for me because as i said before um my classes don't start until like 11 30 so uh, on it's scheduled to end at 1 a.m but even then even if it ends at like 2.30, then that's fine, because even if I go to bed at 3, then I can wake up at, like, 10 and still be on time for my classes, so that's fine. Um, so that's good, and then sit with the university, I think that's, uh, oh, how could I, how could I forget this part? Um, I saw the doctors recently to, um, check up on my ADHD meds. I found out that I lost uh, not a significant amount of weight, but I lost some weight, which is good because um, <clears throat> our scale here at home isn't really accurate. Um, because it's like it was this old scale that's that we found in cleaning up the house. Like, it, God knows how long it's been here, right? So it's very old weight scale, so it's not really accurate. Um, so I've been like exercising more and like eating healthier and stuff and all this stuff and haven't really seen any like proof um, in like my in the measurement of my weight and stuff until I saw the doctor and I found out that I'm at 180 180 pounds which is eight pounds lighter than I was two months ago because uh, May 16th was my last appointment with him. 16th, I was 188 pounds, so 8 pounds in 2 months, so it's like a pound a week, which is fucking awesome, and I, um, that's a sign that it'll just keep going, I'll just keep losing and losing weight, and, um, I'm getting a more healthy relationship with my body and stuff like that, so it's all going well with that stuff, and, uh, and then work is work. <laughs> kicking my ass, dude. Um, just because everyone hates, including myself, everyone hates the boss. Um, but, you know, I'm leaving in a month, so. I think fuck. And I only work, like, two or three times a week, so it's not that, it's not that horrible. It could be worse. Some people are off much, much worse working there, which makes me feel a bit better about it, but. at me, but, yeah, so that's kind of it, um, and then, yeah, yesterday, it's a little funny, I'll talk about it, <laughs> I think this is the last thing before I show you guys the trailer, but, um, yeah.
I'm here. What was I saying? Let me just uh, think. Oh, uh, also for university, I painted my graduation cap and my uh, bulletin board. And I will show you guys in a second, but let me tell you that story. So, um, <laughs> yesterday I went on like a close to three hour, um, God, I would call it a hike, let's say. Um, but yeah, like walk to get some stuff for university and residence and stuff. But, um, got some storage containers for organizing my stuff. Um, uh, got some records for my record player, um, which I'm allowed to bring, thank fuck, because it said on the list of stuff not to bring uh, was uh, subwoofers, which is not what my record player uses, so I can use it. I'm using that for a sense. Um, it's not even like it would be loud. If people are bothered by it, I can just turn, I can just turn the dial of the volume down. So, yeah. So I'm excited about that. Um, and then I think that's all I got. And then like a pin that was at the record store as well for my backpack. Um, because putting pins in your backpack is dope. No one will tell me otherwise. And then... I think that was like... Yeah. And then... And then like some hangers, just in case I need more. I got like a couple of tech things that I needed from the uh, computer store, uh, the tech store near me, uh, on the way back from the record store that I used. I got a power cord, or a power bar, oh, it's for the breakers, just for like all my devices, including my PS4 and the TV that I will buy soon. Um, and then an extension cord, because that's just obvious. Like in case I need that, and then ask the guy about TVs, about like medium-sized TVs, because the only thing that university says is not large TVs, which is very fucking vague, and I hate that so much. Um, and I should call um, in the next day or two, or just soon, sooner rather than later, to the university to ask about clarification to what. Uh, not large means is that like that's so fucking big and like I don't know why they can't just be accurate to describe it more but yeah um so the story so I go back from the record store I was a little uh, of a long walk oh and I was about to drive the bus from Goodwill her store Thrifted a trilogy box for all my trinkets and things. Really. Um, but yeah, anyway, that was the last thing. So, from Goodwill, I went to the AW just to get a snack and a cold drink because it was hot outside yesterday. And, um, anyway, as I finished my drink and I'm leaving, I like, I overheard the workers. fries <laughs> and this like woman um I, I was like okay whatever and then I open the door and then this like uh this fucking guy like you know like a happy uh, fry container whatever I heard better word um was walking through and I was and like I had tank top, sunglasses, like shitty beard, mullet, fucking like very um what do you call it? It's not cyclist, what the fuck am I saying? Very motorcycle American guy, you know what I mean? And then, like, he he gave off he gave off that vibe. Anyway. That and he was like walking all aggressively, like that that guy, that kind of guy. He walked through and just being my 
myself, I just left the door open, but I just pulled out the door open for him, because I'm like, okay, I don't care who you are. I still want to hold the door open for you. I left, um, after he, after he went in, because I didn't really care about the whole situation, but... Also, I was about to open the door, some, like, some middle-aged, like, blonde, skinny lady with, like, a southern fucking accent, holding, like, uh, I think, like, a bag, um, a take-up from A&W, something like, <clears throat> she sounded like this, okay, and she was about to leave as well, um, before I was about to leave, so she was telling the workers, announcing, um, basically saying, <clears throat> You guys should call the police because that man ain't right. And I was like, oh, fuck. <laughs> okay, Karen. Like, you don't need to. I'm sure they're aware that this guy's a little bit of a dick. Um, like, you don't. You don't really. Yeah, you don't need to announce it, my guy. Like, but yeah, I didn't really care. They left after that. All the rest of my stuff. Yeah, so I'll show you the. Some board that I painted for my door and as well as the graduation cap. After those two things, I'm sure you guys the trip. One second. Oh, I'm very good. Right. So this can't really fuck. You can't really see it well, but this is the bulletin board. Um, I tried to, I tried to paint like a galaxy, um, I paint very abstract, so like, yeah, I kind of paint Star Wars-ish, um, can't really see, like the red and blue, and like rebellion and Sith, um, oh, on either side, that, um, and then like, our own stuff, oh, shit, this is supposed to, shit, this is supposed to be like the galaxy and the gold is like the border. Hopefully my roommate will think it's cool. Hopefully you guys think it's cool. But yeah. I don't know. Maybe I'll tweak it. Eventually, but anyway. I'll show you guys the graduation. of the movie alone and it was gonna be classic local credits video essay like eight to ten minutes um whatever right but then i figured it's gonna be a very busy month can't really make another one of these for a while um not only gonna be able to make another video essay so i should put on this one and i just broke my heart and soul out on the script talking about uh, the message of with great power, there must also come great responsibility. 
and what that means to me, and what that means to uh, a lot of other, quite a few other characters I love, besides Spider-Man, as well as some other Spider people that are talking about, including Andrew Garfield and Tom Holland. just film overall and just life and like kind of seeing what the message applies to and so that's like a 16 minute video um a double the length of a typical video as i would i would make uh, i think it's good uh, a few people one of my friends gave me feedback uh, my, my audio wasn't the best it could be i got an audio recorder that was awesome also something I've done recently. Um, so I figure I should have an audio recorder <laughs> um, for the future. It's good quality. I just was very much kind of rushing this video essay uh, uh, recording-wise. Editing-wise, I didn't really. Um, but recording-wise, like recording the dialogue, the script, I kind of rushed it a bit. And um, I was like walking around my house while recording it like, dog was walking around, you can hear it walking around in the background, like, uh, but all in all it does sound good, it just sounds a little, um, sounds a little off, but like, sounds good, but yeah, um, so anyway, the best significant power comes great responsibility, uh, is probably what, is like probably the most, like the message I live by the most. I live by a lot of a lot of things, but great power comes great responsibility means like I don't know, might explain it to you for you nerds, but like just explain the concept of it like it's if you have power to do something and the ability to do something, um then to help someone or whatever then you have responsibility to use that power and whatever you can do to fulfill that power um, and use that power for good so in terms of me um, with great power with great responsibility um, with me and the film going with the film industry kind of means I have the power of being able to make films um, and shows them whenever being able to be a filmmaker and I have the responsibility to motivate and inspire and spark ideas in kids and just people's lives um, who don't feel motivated in life and maybe my films with the power of filmmaking that I have can maybe um, get some other people to find more motivation in their life or uh, find more creativity in their life or find more positivity in their life or um, inspiration, anything like that. That's why I want to be a filmmaker for that. If it's just one kid or one person, that's, that's all I want. If that happens, when I know what happens, then I don't even need the Oscar. <laughs> but yeah. So, as you can see, um, I originally tried to write the words with paint, but it didn't really go well. So I underestimated how much space for the letters I would need. Um, you can, I'm glad you can still see it. Um, but the Andrew's spider emblem is here, you can see it outlined. Um, because Andrew was my favorite live action spider man, so I figured I'd do the emblem of my favorite spider man. Um, so, and then the water is red and blue, like Spider Man, and, uh, and gold as well, and then yeah. And some red and blue dots as well, because that's fun. Uh, so yeah, I quite like it. A lot of people thought it was cool. The only thing that would make it better is like 
if I didn't, if I originally just did the glued like the red letters on without the mistake of trying to do it with paint before. But, um, yeah. Other than that, other than the, the lines that you guys saw, like the, I don't know if you can see it well, but like the, um, yeah, you can't see it well, but I also like around every word I like also wrote it in a very small thin line like with uh, a thin sharpie kind of look like it's written three times to kind of represent like how much it is to me how important it is but anyway so yeah I'm sure the time you guys can see this simple man watches a movie which a fellow simple man is being watched for his whole life in the medium a live broadcast called the Truman Show we'll have to wait and see and arrive on time and come prepared for the interview October yeah man hope you guys like that trailer happened or is still happening um <laughs> but, uh, so let me just find an article of everything that's happened in Comic Con that's been announced I 
should have killed you at birth. Like, holy shit. They're gonna, they're gonna have a rematch. Um, I hope. Um, I hope Mark wins. Please win, Mark. Please. <laughs> Don't die. Um, I never read, I've never read the graphic novels in the comics. But, um, I just fucking love these characters in this universe, so. Yeah, dude, I'm fucking super excited for Invincible Season 2. It's been a long time coming. But. I'm glad no one ever got mad about that, including myself. Because it takes a long time for people to work on stuff. Um, <laughs> fuck, man, especially with the SAG after stuff recently. Um, that hasn't been great. <laughs> And I've been keeping track of both, like, how to avoid that stuff. How to still, um, this is still applies to me, even though I'm not going to be an actor. Um, because writers are also involved in Sign Aftra, and I'm going to be a director writer. That very much applies to me on the rules of Sign Aftra. And clearly, man, <laughs> stuff is not going well for all. A lot of these people, including writers, um, behind the scenes, writers, actors, uh, CGI artists, artists, it's not going well for the film industry right now, and um, I'm sure this strike won't take long, and it won't take long for these idiots um, that are fucking trying to Hollywood and producers and shit to realize, oh, Maybe we should treat these fuckers better. Like, it's not that hard to understand, and I don't know why people aren't getting it. Those people, those stupid people aren't getting it. But really, like... Um... Yeah, no wonder people, like, dress the CGI in Marvel or DC or, like, just movies a lot. Because they aren't treated well. They're overpaid, they're underpaid, and, under and overworked. Um, and a lot of, like, and everyone else is, and it's, I really hope it gets better, because I'm going to, like, I'm going in this industry, I'm, I ain't dealing with, I, 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 I ain't dealing, fucking up, I ain't dealing with that shit, because, like, as a writer, as any, everyone, anyone and everyone, working behind the scenes or on camera or anything, deserves same amount of work time or hours of pay, like, of respect, like, it doesn't matter who you are on the, on the set, like, it doesn't, like, it doesn't, and people don't see that, and it's really fucking frustrating to see all this shit come to light, and it just sucks that all the, like, I don't, I don't know um, all the stuff that happens on these sets, but, like, I'm sure, like, I'm, like, 99% sure it's not the director's fault, because people in charge of the directors are the producers, are the um, heads of Hollywood, are all those people. They're the ones who overwork everyone and underpay everyone. It's not, it's not right. And it's only the director. The director can't lose their job. It, they, like, it's just so corrupted and so fucked up that the director basically has, like, has to fucking overwork and underpay their employees on set every day because these producers, because yeah, if not, these producers and heads of Hollywood will fucking cancel the fucking project. And it just sucks, because it shouldn't be that hard. It shouldn't be that corrupted and fucked up. It should. And um, I just hope it all gets resolved soon. But until that time, I mean, like, I'm sure it won't affect university students. Like, if we're making fucking, um, it's not like we're on, sets by a director every day, right? Like it's, we're making our own 
stuff, our own stories. It's not like we're, it's not like York is a studio, right? So I'm sure that won't affect us or affect me specifically. And then in terms of content, I'll just stay away from promoting um, strong companies and the projects of, the projects of sad strong companies. Like for example, the video I said, but like I was talking about Spider-Verse for a bit, but I wasn't promoting it, I was just talking about it. Um, I originally, before I found out this stuff, because I was working on the video essay, um, and then I found out while well, making the video essay about this, so I didn't include the part at the end of me saying, oh, this is, oh of course Spider-Verse is a 10 out of 10 movie, go see it. Like, because that's promoting the movie, and that will get me in trouble. Um, with Psychiatra, so won't promote anything anymore. I'll just talk about stuff like I usually do. Um, so yeah, that's what I'm doing. That's what I'm following as for Psychiatra and this strike. It's happening, and um, yeah. So back to Comic Con. Um, a lot of stuff I don't really care about. This is fucking awesome. I am getting that. Um, day one when it fucking comes out um i don't know when the fuck it comes out <laughs> it's sometime in sometime in october i could ask for that for my birthday and that'd be a fucking dope gift for whoever gets me that i am so excited <laughs> oh like i would love to see that as a movie that's the type of shit I want to see. It, like, okay, bear, nah, scratch that. Justice League vs. Godzilla vs. Kong, bro. <laughs> That's the new cocaine bear right there. I am so excited for that. Um, don't really care about that. I still need to watch The Boys. Um, what? I didn't know that. I didn't know there's what the what the fuck. I didn't know there's a Borderlands movie. God damn. Um, that's awesome. <sighs> okay, anyone that grew up with Cartoon Network knows my hype with this shit. <sighs> and it's not just, uh, I, as you see the trailer, I won't show you guys the trailer because it's like, I don't want all the audio in the Spotify version of this. But, um, Dude, the fucking Fiona and Cake trailer showed that it's not just about like the show itself of Fiona and Cake, it's filling in gaps. This is Kenobi for Adventure Time's universe, bro. Because it's not just Fiona and Cake and they're they're funny like themselves. It's also it shows the highlight of Simon a lot, the Ice King. Before he was Ice King, it shows people before the apocalypse happened, before everyone turned. Um not human, like, and it's a big fucking deal for this universe, because until this point, we've had no idea why the world, the land of Ooh has gotten to this point. Maybe it wasn't even called Ooh. Maybe, maybe it was Earth. Maybe it was a birth of Earth. And all, all we've known about the apocalypse and why Ice King turned Ice King, and why Simon turned Ice King, and why Jake the dog turned. Um, ended up being able to talk like all these things because of nuclear holocaust or nuclear event it's all we've known we haven't known why we haven't known how we haven't known how the people were before like none of it and now we finally get to fucking find out <sighs> um, I'm so excited for that for this and um, it's fucking next month lazy with the pirating stuff. I don't remember the last time I pirated something. Um, but this, this is something to pirate because first of all, I'm not fucking getting HBO Max. First of all, HBO sucks. Second of all, um, it's just a shitty company. Second of all, I ain't paying for that. <laughs> I am paying someone, paying for something that I can easily just pirate on a fixed door. Um, 
this is the easiest shit to pirate stuff. So you just watch it, and there you go. So, might as well do when this shit comes out. I'm so excited for it. Looks cute, it looks funny. Um, looks fucking dope with Ice King and stuff, and all those other characters from Fiona's Fiona and Cakes universe. That looks dope. Yeah, man. I don't know how many episodes it will be, how many seasons, I, I don't know. I don't know if it's a limited edition thing, multiple seasons, I, I hope it's multiple seasons. Um, but if it's just a limited edition, and it's just a full start to finish story of how the apocalypse happened, then I'd be happy with that. I'd be happy with that. And how Finn and Fiona, and how Finn and Fiona connect, and how Cake and Jerry connect, then I'd be happy with that. Yeah, I'm super excited for that. I heard that. And then, um... Uh, that clip was dope of Team and T. I'm so excited for that movie. As I talked about last time. Um, it's got the heart. It's got the humor. It's got the fucking comic feel with that shot. It's so cool. Um, oh, I don't care about Pokemon, really. Um, 20 minutes, god damn. I didn't know 20 minutes for showing. I still need to watch Harley Quinn. Um, it's on my list. I watch this on Netflix. The first three seasons on Netflix already. Um, that already helps because, yeah. Um, wait, what? Spider-Man 2 trailer. I don't care how long it takes. What things I have to do for money. I am getting the PS5. And I'm getting Spider-Man 2. I don't care. If it takes five years, I am getting the Penguin. <sighs> Insomniac Insomniac's Spider-Man universe is one of, if not the definitive version of Spider-Man. And you guys already know. Spider-Man means so fucking much to me, and for like, for this version of the character and his mythos and his universe, being I mean, like so accurate and so uh, well told, it, it never misses in storytelling or characters or anything. Um, Peter's face, all the face models are good, Peter looks better mm. compared to the old face model, the old new face model. Um, yeah, man. Uh, Harry is obviously Venom. I don't know why people didn't think he was Venom. First of all, because fucking five years ago, about this, it's a long time ago, um, and I was 12. Anyway, uh, makes me feel old. <laughs> but Harry was shown in the fucking tank with the symbiote. Like, it was, it was obvious from the fucking first game. That Harry Osborn was gonna be better. I don't know why people like were doubtful of that. I mean, like, okay, maybe people didn't want to believe Peter's best friend was gonna be better, and how heartbreaking that would fucking be in a in a sequel game. But it's gonna happen, and it's gonna fucking tear us apart emotionally, and it's gonna hurt. And um, especially with me dealing with, especially with me in my past, with like friends I used to know and stuff. I know this game is gonna hurt me. <laughs> Specifically for that fucking reason. Um, man, it comes out on my birthday, or like a couple days after my birthday. Bro, I need this. I need this. <laughs> uh, depending on how much money I make from the equipment I'm selling, I might fucking get a PS5 with that money. <laughs> I don't know, man. <laughs> saying like oh it's shitty because marvel is woke and women uh like those people are dumbasses they are it looks like a fun movie um granted i like and uh, i like when marvel when marvel stuff is 
like we know it's connected, but it feels disconnected. For example, I mean, it, after Endgame, those examples vary, like Shang Chi, um, Wakanda Forever. Uh, Black Widow at some parts, um, some of the shows, uh, Guardians 3 obviously, uh, like some, like a lot of these things, like some, um, like those things and probably a few more have felt, uh, were probably some of the best of Marvel because they felt not like some cash grab, look at this universe that we keep, that we keep uh, milking for money. But look at these cool characters that you're invested in, that you care about. Look at, um, look at the emotional um, intensity of, of how you care about these characters and why you care about these characters. Look, that's look at the heart of these movies or the relatability of these movies, like. That's what some of these projects since that game I felt like, and that's some of the best of Marvel I've ever seen. I'm not kidding, like, Con Forever is one of the best Marvel movies I've ever seen. Because it was so real to life, it was so real to um, film, it was, it was incredible. And it didn't feel like, oh, look at this new Shuri figure <laughs> that we're selling at Toys R Us. Like, it didn't, it didn't feel like that. And unfortunately, even though it looks fun, that's what the Marvels feels like. Like it looks like it's just a cash grab for fucking, like, flirting stuffed animals or... Look at, look at Captain Marvel's new suit, look at Kamala's new suit, look at Monica Rambo's new suit. It looks like it's just to sell toys. And that's what every, um, fun feeling Marvel movie has felt like, because even though I'm in the minority that like Far From Home, um, this is it's just another example, um, it was just another fucking cash grab, because he had like multiple suits, well, multiple toys of Spider-Man different suits, like it just, <sighs> I don't know man, but um, It, it is really cool. Um, it doesn't... <sighs> like, it's difficult for me to talk on the whole representation thing. The representation problem of film, but um, especially in terms of women. But, um, all I will say is that uh, we, women are awesome and badass and strong. I don't know why film and Marvel specifically, superhero genre, no, superhero, comic book, fuck, how do I say that? Comic book movie studios have to, like, highlight <laughs> on the race or the gender or anything of the, like, anything like that of the character and not just the character themselves. I don't know why it needs to be a representation race. Because, <laughs> um, like, it should just be one world. And unfortunately, that's not how the world is. Like, it should just be we're people. We're not, like, it's not, um, I don't know. It, it's just, it's just fucked up the way the world is, of how, um, you can't just have people be people in a movie. Or characters be characters in a movie and not have it be about that. Um, because some of the best of Marvel and of movies um, and, and, when, and like art in general is a temporary moment, a temporary moment away from the fucked up hitness uh, the messed up shit of the messed up bullshit of our world that's some of the greatest like that's what some of the greatest movies 
are about and highlight on. And this seems like the opposite. Um, it seems fun that I love each of them. I love Monica, I love I love Captain Marvel. I love Kamal Khan. Um, they're all great characters, and um, I love Nick Fury, obviously. Um, it's a little weird in terms of like, because we just saw him. Look, we're seeing him. Uh, by the way, no spoilers for episode 5 of Secret Invasion yet. I haven't seen it. Um, but I've been loving Secret Invasion. And one of Marvel's greatest uh, shows, in my opinion. Because. Um, with the Marvel shows and with these Disney Plus shows, they're character studies. They, they really are. Um, they're studies of who a group of people is in the universe, or a certain character is. Um, a side you haven't seen, like, and that's so fucking cool in terms of, like, my film brand and stuff, because you see the writing of these characters and how, like, a lot of really interesting parts haven't been explored in the movies, because, you know, because these shows allow to really highlight on one character and one person, and that's... That's really good about to say plus. Um, cash grab aside, um, you know, um, boosting, boosting up the fucking pay to pay for Zip plus aside, like, it's a good platform to discover these sides, these different sides of characters that you can highlight. Um, and it's just unfortunate because with the Marvels, it's all three of them in one movie, it's Nick Fury in another movie, it's this random Kree villain that we haven't seen in a movie that's like connected to Ronin and like the Kree, whatever, and Captain Marvel from the first movie, but like, we don't get to explore any of them. Unfortunately, um, that's why it's weird seeing Nick Fury in, still in, um, S.W.O.R.D. or whatever it's called, um, the S.H.I.E.L.D. space station, whatever, um, like, before Secret Invasion, and, like, kind of just, like, not being Nick Fury, but just being Nick Fury, if you know what I mean, like, it's not him as a character, it's him as a plot device, and I just don't like that. Um, I don't like when movies do that, specifically comic book movies. But it does look fun. That's what it all comes down to. It does look fun. Um, it looks like a fun time. It looks like Kamala carries the heart of it, uh, as I would assume. Because knowing the character, knowing how, like, knowing how Peter Parker, Spider-Man, Heart empathy based Kamala Khan and Miss Marvel as a character is. I would think she would carry the heart of the movie. Um, the uh, the Carol and Monica like uh, abandonment storyline. Actually, I'm pretty interested. In, like, I was pretty interested in that after uh, seeing one vision and kind of exploring that with Monica. And I'm actually pretty excited for that, to explore that. Hopefully they find the time in the movie to explore that, but, um, yeah, so, Flurkin looks funny, um, the only thing I'm worried about, as is typical with these latest Marvel movies, or just Marvel movies in general, so, since the get-go, uh, these, like, one-off villains, because that just, it just sucks, like, it just sucks. Uh, with the way these comic book structures, these comic book universes are structured. It's like, it's just, it's just some random villain who is more often than not really fucking cool, really interesting, and you want to get to know them more in another project, but then they die. They die, or, like, they have 10 minutes of screen time, and then they're, they, the character dies, or they're fired, or whatever, or like, they don't want to come back because of how they were treated or like some bullshit like that. 
I'm just worried that that will happen with this film too. Oh, she seems interesting. Uh, but yeah. Um, and then also, there's the Freaky Friday concept in a Marvel movie. is just really interesting. So, excited for it. Just about everything I said um, and think. But yeah. And the next thing. Um, So, Borderlands streaming service. Huh. Interesting. Um, I never watched Walking Dead, so. I don't really care about the Walking Dead stuff. Um, a lot of people I know who like it, who love it, um, just say it's gone off too long. So. Um, that's fucking awesome. I didn't know about that. The Andy Samberg making a comic book thing with his friend. That's that's dope. stupid joke however many fucking years ago. Like, the none of this against culture wouldn't even exist. <sighs> anyway, um, let's look at this. Oh, he looks so fucking cool. 
Um, November 3rd? I didn't know we got a release date. Yo! Hell yeah. Okay, this. I posted this this morning. I'm talking about it, but holy shit. Knowing how genius, and I say that lightly, I don't say that often. Knowing how genius DC AMU, the DC Animated Universe, um, with like Just Nowhere as Batman, and it started with Just the War and ended with Just the Dark Apocalypse. Just as the Dark Apocalypse War. Um, and it was an amazing universe, one of the best connected universes I've ever seen. And it lasted um, from 2012 to 2020, or 2013 to 2020, whatever. It was 10 years. It was fucking amazing. I always see this in the same universe, but knowing how amazing DC is at animation. for the Crisis on Infinite Earths and Watchmen animated movies too. Like, please be good. Because that is amazing. This is more accurate because it was three hours ago. Uh, One Piece, there was a new trailer for that as well. Um, I don't know, I think it looks cool. Um, I just need to watch the show eventually in my life, but I don't know. Um, oh, it's an interactive series, not a streaming service. Should have just said that. Um, oh, that was it. Yeah, let me just see more accurate articles. Um, oh, you know what? This dude. Yeah. 
seems cool. Seems cool. Um, but yeah, hold on. Let me see if Twitter, Twitter is probably more accurate. It's like on the dot and stuff. Um, dude from, um, fucking, what's it called? The movie with Ryan Reynolds, it, it was a good movie, and it was a good thing. so I'm excited for him, as far as he, and Beth, cool, cool, and then Grover, I don't know, I just, I really liked, I agree with that comment, um, Yeah, like, okay. <laughs> like, I'm just... Like, her and, um, her seeing Grover and their, and their versions of them. Or what I grew up on, and it's just difficult to see them think of it, but anyway. That's funny. Uh, <laughs> what else was there? Oh, 
supposed to do a Fortnite movie? God damn it. That means it's gonna happen because the moment someone puts it in the ether, they want to make a movie, it gets greenlit. Fuck. <laughs> damn it. released they also had a bunch of Disney shorts so like that there's one called Hair Love and it was um this uh black dad uh, doing his uh daughter's uh, hair it was just a really powerful and the mom came in at the end and they all loved it it was a powerful like short uh, animation short film from the power of family and how they're all connected. Um, the, bond, the bond between a dad and daughter, and it was just really powerful and amazing. Um, for, be, for there to be a series, dude? That's awesome. And Kid Cudi, I mean, I love Kid Cudi and everything he does. Um, watching and loving, loving Intergalactic, uh, the movie that he helped make. A reality is fucking awesome. Um, Issa Rae was awesome and inspired her, so I'm really hopeful with the voice cast. That's awesome. The Blue Beetle trailer was dope. Um, I hope it's not just another 
typical formula screen. Seems like it, but I'm really excited for the movie. It's a great cast, I'm sure. Um, I think that's in Velka. Yeah. So, um, I, I might get that too. Batman Mask of the Phantasm, because I don't think I've ever actually seen Mask of the Phantasm before. Um, I've seen like clips and shit, and how important it is. I've never actually seen the movie, so for it to like be released for like its um, anniversary, I'll probably get it. Awesome start, start of season three, by the way. Uh, on episode four, right now, it's very good. Not ready for anything emotional that happens. <laughs> but, um, excuse me, but I would talk about the Flash, but I haven't seen it yet. I've just seen a lot about it. Um, spoilers, bad spoilers included. But I haven't seen the movie yet fully. That was going to be a topic point on today's episode, but like, it, I have no true opinion of my own about it. Um, other than just agreeing with it, other people's opinions, so. Uh, I'll probably be next time, um, if I do see it, but yeah. So. Yeah, I think that's about it with movies and shit. Basically, 
the storyline from Amazing Spider-Man 2 for them to actually do that well, because the problem with the Amazing Spider-Man 2, yes, the writing, whatever, and all those extra stuff, the main problem was that he turned into a goblin, a second green goblin, which didn't go over well. It wasn't enough. For them to make him Venom, that's good, because that shows the darkness within Peter himself, and for Peter to get the symbiote suit before Harry turns to Venom is a great part, because then you see the darkness within both of them, and then they both see how to kind of help each other, how to kind of help the world, and then both accept this darkness or defeat it. And that's a really cool storyline, and that did well, it wasn't really explored in the experiment too, so hopefully that's done well in this game. Characters, Peter looks better, like I said, and uh, everyone looks better. Uh, I don't know why people are saying the game looks bad. Those people are stupid. So, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, man, I'm very excited for this game. Like I said, if I get the money, I get the money piece by then get this game. No matter what it fucking takes. <laughs> Eventually, man. Um, and I'll make a whole ass series about it because. My emotions will be fully just raw and just experiencing that game. <sighs> but yeah. Um, and then like... Um, and then Tony Todd's voice, dude. That's better. We are going to heal the world. Like, dude. That was dope. I got chills when that happened. Um, I would've like killed to fucking see that live in Comic-Con and like a tube screen, oh, that would have been awesome. But yeah, and then, it'd be cool if we had a Green Goblin, like, credit scene with Norman, maybe? I don't know if they're gonna do Norman Green Goblin, because he's a little, like, old, older. Um, not like Willem Dafoe's Norman wasn't old. Who knows what it is, but... Anyway, yeah, man. Um, that'd be cool, I suppose, credit scene. it with the game, I mean, with the trailer. And then, um, MJ working for Jonah is interesting. Her being a reporter, like always, I mean, that's always an interesting story. Um, yeah, I think that's it. So, with all that being said, it's been about grace. It's been this one last time.